All right guys, so some of you may know about this already, some of you may not. But the other day, uh, the news was kind of spilled that this year I will be driving in Formula Drift Pro 2. Now, I kind of wanted to reveal the news to you guys and make a video like this talking about it, but uh, what ended up happening is a driver roster got updated on the site, some people screenshotted it, and it started getting spread around Facebook and stuff. So, uh, word has been out for a little while now, but I've been kind of running around like crazy and haven't had time to sit down and properly make a video kind of explaining my decision, why I'm doing Pro 2, what it's gonna entail, what it's gonna change, etc. And that is something that I wanted to do for you guys. So that's what we're gonna do for the first, I don't know, couple minutes of this video. Before I go into too much detail, I recognize that some of you guys aren't probably very aware of the differences in professional level of drifting. So to kind of dumb it down for you, there's three different tiers. There's Pro-Am, then Pro-2, then Pro-1. Pro-Am is kind of like a, uh, a regional feeder series. So there'll be different Pro-Ams in different regions of the country. Um, the level of cars kind of all over the place. You'll have some people that will be competing with Pro 2 level cars, some people with more of a budget-minded car, and usually uh, there isn't necessarily a, a winner based on car. It's a lot of difference with driving, and usually the better drivers come out on top. They get awarded a Pro 2 license, um, different series and different events. Sometimes there's like one hitter events where you can earn a license in one event. Some you have to win an overall season. But anyway, that is how someone would typically get a Pro 2 license. And then in Pro 2, it's kind of uh, like Pro 1, but dumbed down in the sense that cars are limited to two to, eh, to a 255 tire, which isn't that grippy. So it kind of forces people to go a little bit less crazy with power. As you can see, my car, I had to dumb it down to like mid 700s because 950 was just too much on that tire. Um, but anyway, uh, it kind of dumbs it down. It's half the number of events. So it's four events instead of eight events. And it's a little bit easier to run financially where Pro-Am, you can do on a budget. Pro 2 starts getting expensive. You gotta buy hard cards. You gotta buy your entry for the season, which is pretty expensive. Um, and just logistically, like having a team and everything that you need to compete in actual formula drift as compared to Pro-Am starts getting pricey. And then Pro 1 is like the big dogs with the highest caliber of cars, the highest caliber of driving, etc. The two main things that I plan to address in the beginning of this video are why I am doing Pro 2 and how I got my Pro 2 license. Uh, first being why I'm doing it. I know a lot of you guys, when you heard the news, brought up the fact that in the past I expressed very little interest in driving in Formula Drift. Um, that is true to a certain extent and that my goal with drifting was never to become a Formula Drift driver. It wasn't because I wanted to be the best or do these big competitions and stuff and frankly, I do think me as a person, I'm more about, you know, going driving grassroots and going to Japan and trying to do backwards entries and bang doors with people. But uh, when I built the S15 with Injuku, I knew that down the road, I might get the itch to try and compete. So even though the S15, the main goal of it was to build a pro level car to drive with my other friends that are pro drivers at media events like Hyperfest, Gridlife, all these big road course events. Um, and also too, people would always like delegitimize my drive and be like, oh yeah, you, you know, you drive your S13 good, but like put you in a pro car, you'd be able to hang. So I'm like, all right, all right. All right, all right. But anyway, so it wasn't initially um, the plan to utilize the car for competitive drifting right away. I thought maybe I'd do some pro-am with it. But uh, I think realizing that not a lot of people take out their cars of that caliber just every day to go drive kind of left me itching to want to drive with cars of a similar caliber and there really isn't a place to do that other than Pro 2. Two big fears of mine with FD were one, that it would take over my life and kind of suck the fun out of drifting because it does require a lot of time planning and like legitimacy to put together a program. And two, um, not feeling ready. So when I started driving the S15 for the first time at OSW, started getting practice and you know started really getting comfortable with the car, I think I surprised myself in that I felt way more comfortable than I anticipated. And I started doing runs pretending like I was in FD at the Oval uh, with zero intentions of actually doing FD at that point. And then I realized like, whoa, I could actually probably do this. It's not that out of the realm of my driving ability. And that was kind of a, a wake up call to me that I think I downplayed my own ability more so than I probably should have. And it made me feel good about myself. But the main, the main reason why I started considering Pro 2 is I've always, you know, talk to my friends that are pro drivers that drive either Pro 2 with a very limited budget or do Pro 1, which is very time demanding with a very legitimate team and legitimate car, where I didn't realize Pro 2 is only four rounds. 
The first round is in Orlando, which is in my backyard. Then like a week later, Atlanta, which is, you know, like a seven, eight hour drive. And then there's a two month break. Then there's one in the Midwest in St. Louis. Then there's one in Texas uh, a month later. So timing wise and location wise, it will require very little from me to be able to logistically run a program because it's very easy. I have all my resources in Florida for the first round, which will give me a good confidence booster. Then Atlanta is very close where you can literally drive there. Then we have a massive break to go over the car for me to go do stupid things and go travel and have fun. Um, and then there's one round and then another month break to go over the car and then another round to the point where I genuinely think if I was running the S15 in Pro-Am, which would have upset a lot of people because it's insanely overbuilt for Pro-Am, it would have required more out of me to run a Pro-Am season than a Pro 2 season. Not financially, but in terms of my time and commitment to going to certain events and not being able to do other fun stuff because of those commitments to those events. Because I would have ended up running Texas uh, Pro-Am, which I think is like eight different rounds, correct me if I'm wrong, and going back and forth to Texas often, would be a lot more difficult than the Pro 2 schedule. So again, my biggest concern was it taking away from all the fun stuff that I wanna do and because logistically, it's very easy for me to make Pro 2 rounds happen and also, I guess you could say as well, I did have a very large concern that if I ran the S15 in Pro-Am that I would end up totaling that car or wasting it both either by doing something stupid or with an inexperienced driver that I'm driving with and I really didn't want to take a car that's built to that caliber and waste it in Pro-Am, if that makes sense. Now, in addition to it being very easy for me to handle logistically, uh, well, I guess I'm talking about more locationally. So in addition to being able to handle it locationally, logistically, uh, compared to most people that drive a lot of the grassroots events and stuff that I do, I kind of have a more professional program in the sense that I have Alberto working for me full time and Tommy working for me full time and we kind of take these fun events seriously and I don't mean seriously like not fun I mean seriously like you know we're used to constantly going over the cars tearing down engines inspecting things bolt checking you know uh, coming up with an organized and effective way to fix things, designing things to be easily serviceable, which are very important characteristics of a Pro 2 program to where if you're not used to treating things like that, it can be a big jump. Um, but because I enjoy driving so much, I've always kind of taken it seriously in the sense that I don't want my cars to break and I enjoy trying to figure out how we can do things better and logistically having Tommy drive the rig while having Alberto as support has worked really well and will make that transition into Pro 2 much easier. And also on top of that as well, I don't know how much we've really gone into it, but Tommy did work for Pat quite a bit, uh, kind of helping him run his Formula Gift program and Pat also, who you've seen has been hanging out with us a lot lately, have been able to help a lot in terms of the back end and the logistics to where Tommy has been handling most of the paperwork and all the important stuff that we have to figure out so I can keep being a stupid idiot and going and having fun riding my bike or drifting dumb events and just traveling so it isn't this overwhelming thing that's like, oh, I can't make videos now because of this or I can't do this because of this, but mind you, uh, a Partial reason why my uploads have kind of been all over the place is because there has been a lot of stuff kind of going on and me trying to sort um, things lined up for Formula Drift in regards to whether it's like sponsor stuff, um, filling out paperwork, I had to go get a physical, stuff like that. I mean, it sounds like not a lot, but it is stuff that because it's been a secret um, for the most part, I haven't been able to film it, so it has been kind of making it kind of tough. Alberta's calling me a lot. It's probably bad news. We'll talk about it later, but I think we have to rip apart the S15 engine. <laughs> so yeah, confirmed. Uh, <laughs> this will be a topic for another video. But the S15 engine needs to come out and go to the machine shop. Uh, sick, FD Orlando's in two weeks. Sick, but no, we should have time, that's good. Well, I'll, I'll tell you guys what's going on about that later. <laughs> so sad. But anyway, going back to what we were talking about, I knew that I would kick myself if I was at FD Orlando and FD Atlanta, which I planned on attending and was watching everyone compete knowing that I have a capable car and I possibly have the skill to be able to hang. So it's kind of an, a must for, not a must for me to do it, but I was just like, man, if I can do it. So I'll, I'll get to how I got my license and that stuff in a minute, but more or less, I guess you could say my biggest concern was it, you know, taking away the fun, but because I am luckily financially capable of doing this and having other people handle it for me, I'm not too concerned because it is only four events that have a lot of space 
and time between them and because I can still keep doing my fun stuff and in the end of the day my like identity as a person and as a drifter to me isn't defined by how I do in FD. Um, in the end of the day, I do well, awesome, I have fun, awesome, but if not, I'm still gonna go to Japan and bang doors in my JZX and just chill and drink Japanese coffee and eat ramen, you know? It's life. I think what it boils down to though, in regards to my actual interest in willingness to be putting together this Pro 2 program, um, is with what I've been doing and kind of, as you guys have seen, I've been traveling all over doing all these events, I kind of feel like in a sense I've been wandering aimlessly in that uh, I kind of can go to wherever I want and do whatever I want with drifting and I, I've felt the need for more kind of direction and more challenge in my life uh, and Pro 2 kind of tickled my fancy in that sense to where it kind of adds a little bit more legitimacy, a little bit more professionalism to where it is forcing me to get comfortable wearing more legitimate safety gear. It's making us as a team get more legitimate in our practices and how we maintain and prevent issues from happening with these cars. It's causing us to collect more data when we go out and run. And uh, it both excites me and kind of opening my eyes to a new world of drifting that I hadn't seen before. Um, and kind of just keeps me like, you know, striving and pushing harder. And also too, everyone involved, and I'll talk about kind of who's on my team and everything, is super, super excited to be a part of this team where like, we're gonna go have fun and I think that we're gonna do well um, between the car, my team, and hopefully my driving ability. I think all of us feel pretty confident and we're excited to be a part of something cool. Obviously I'm gonna try my best to do really well when it comes to competing and stuff, but because my initial mindset was to compete in FD in 2020, I kind of viewed this year like, hey, if I can get into Pro 2, um, I'll kind of utilize it to get acclimated. So obviously it's a big jump coming from the stuff that I've typically done into Pro 2 and you know having to learn about drivers meetings that they do and when to go out on track and how this works and how that works. That I was just like, you know what, I'll, I'll use 2019 as kind of my, my kickstart, my head start, my uh, getting a feel for it, getting acclimated with everything. So that way if this is something that I enjoy and really wanna do, I can go in with full force in 2020 and just do really, really well. So everyone kinda knows that that's my attitude and it takes away a bit of the stress from everything because I'm not like, oh, I need to win, I need to have the best this. And it's, it's gonna be a fun experience. It's gonna be cool and it's gonna be different and I'm gonna do my best, but I'm not like going for blood, if that makes sense. So how did I get a Pro 2 license to compete? Typically, what most of you guys know because of other YouTubers and what they've said on the internet, the traditional way to get a Pro 2 license would be to place in a Pro-Am series. However, there is an alternative route that is called petitioning. You can petition basically to get an FD Pro 2 license if you have the credentials to get in. And what was expressed to me um, by FD themselves when I petitioned is what they look at is results. So the fact that I've done a lot of different competitions in different areas and have placed well, that speaks to them. They use that in conjunction with the fact that there is no local Pro-Am series in Florida. So you'll see a lot of people from other countries petitioning and getting into Pro 2 and even Pro 1 because they don't have Formula Drift accredited series and they're able to use their results to say, hey look, this is my program and this is the car and this is how I've placed. Um, I would like to drive in Pro 2 and they can buy a license if they have the proper credentials. So because of the different competitions and all the driving that I've done everywhere, I was awarded a Pro 2 license. Well, I shouldn't say awarded. I had to buy a Pro 2 license because they looked at you know my driver resume. I had to put together a legitimate driver resume with you know my results and the events that I've done and how long I've been driving, etc. Um, and that's how I was awarded a Pro 2 license. So uh, I would feel very, very weird about getting a Pro 2 license this way and not competing through Pro-Am if I didn't feel very confident in both my car, my ability, and my team. Um, so I do think uh, regardless, you know, people have and are gonna give me crap because I didn't go through the traditional Pro-Am route, but uh, in the end of the day, like I said, um, Pro-Am just would've been so much wear and tear on the car, would've been more for me to handle logistically, and the allure of doing Pro 2 and being really, really challenged driving with a very, very high level of driver was more alluring to me than knowing that I would do pretty well in Pro-Am since I had done decently well in the events that I have done 
um, in the past when my driving ability was much, much less than I feel like it is now. So in the end of the day, I just really want to challenge. I'm probably going in over my head here, uh, but it's going to be fun and I'm excited. So I don't know. I will say though, it was amazing when word did get out. I was kind of scared to see what people would think and say, but it was amazing seeing how much support there was from you guys, from professional drivers, from my friends that I haven't talked to in ages, and just seeing this overwhelming amount of support for me going into Pro 2 um, made me even that much more excited. And uh, I know I liked a quick post on Twitter, and I think the most common question you guys had would be kind of how this would affect my YouTube channel, what content I would be producing. Um, and I think there is this kind of fear that when someone like me goes into, you know, a professional anything, that there is this loss of uh, genuineness and this e escalated professionalism. Um, but I understand that and I'm going to do my best to still keep, you know, the, the raw and just, you know, personal feeling of videos. But I will say, like I uh, had mentioned, I'm not doing Pro 2 as a thing for my YouTube channel. I'm not doing it because I wanna make content for my videos, I'm doing it for a personal challenge. So in the end of the day, Pro 2 is gonna come first, and then YouTube. But with that being said, um, I am taking another friend of mine who goes by the name of Tommy on that does have a lot of experience filming FD stuff that's going to help me kind of um, assemble my videos and that he'll help film the runs. But I'm gonna try to do my best to you know, keep a camera in the pits, a camera here, you know, GoPro in the car, and just because of my team, which I'll explain in a second, I'm hoping it'll just be kind of, you know, like a typical video at the track, and then he'll be able to help put together the video so I can focus on driving. Um, he's going to basically edit the video of the qualifying day and the competition day. Um, and if you aren't familiar with FD, the qualifying day is typically on Thursday for Pro 2, which isn't open to the public, but Friday the Pro 2 competition is. Saturday I will not be driving, that is Pro 1. So I'm excited to have Tommy on board to be able to help kind of take away that extra stress of staying up late to put together a video. So hopefully I can still produce good videos while we're doing this. Um, but I just, I wanted to make clear that that is not why I am doing this, but I'm still gonna put a big importance on it because obviously that is how I've gotten to where I am today. And as always, I'll be listening to your guys' feedback, suggestions, criticism, and our, like, our first round in Orlando will kind of be a tester for how we can put together content that you guys will enjoy in regards to the rest of the rounds. So I do think there will be a few um, dry days in the sense that you know if we're on the road or afterwards on Saturday, I'll probably just be watching Pro One to where I won't be able to make you know super heavy hitting content. But hopefully, I know you guys in the past have really enjoyed my competition videos and we'll be able to have them out the day after the competition so you guys can see kind of behind the scenes. And hopefully those will be good videos that you guys will enjoy. Um, I do know from experience that any sort of, you know, bigger event video usually gets junk for views. So uh, again, I'm just reiterating, I'm not doing this for YouTube. I wish, I, no, I don't wish I was. I don't know how to explain that, but anyway, I just want a challenge. Another common thing I've seen you guys kind of asking on social media was uh, about my livery for my car and kind of, you know, what graphics I'm gonna do and everything. And uh, this is something where I wanted to kind of be different. And you know, when I, we were building the S15, the goal with it was to kind of make it look like a street car. So I don't know if you guys are gonna be stoked on this or be bummed about this, but the car is going to look exactly like it does right now for Formula Drift. I just think it's cool. The graphics are very subtle. And because I do a lot with YouTube, the sponsors are cool with that because they don't get their value out of having a sticker on my car. They get their value out of me talking about them in videos and actually using and showing their product in content. Uh, so the stickers are, are nearly as important. And I'm able to kind of go in there with a very low key, like street car look. And even though like it would be like, oh, well, you're not gonna stand out. I think it'll be cool and it'll stand out because of the fact it doesn't look like a NASCAR with all these bright stickers everywhere and um, I don't know, it's just, just to be a little different. You know, I got my R32 that's covered in stickers and it's cool but I was like, you know, it'd be so cool to be doing all these events with all these crazy stickered up cars and my little street car looking S15. So that's that. And in the end of the day, like this is kind of all about the experience, being able to have fun and be with a group of people that I'm comfortable with and can, uh, you know, just enjoy time with and stuff. So when putting together the team for our Pro 2 program, 
it's obviously important to have very skilled people on board, but more important to me to have people that, you know, I like being around and that I appreciate and want to bring along with me. So uh, I'll kind of go through our team and you guys will see these are people that you already know that are already in the videos and I'm excited to kind of, I don't know, have just like a team and act all serious and stuff with them. So. Um, you guys will meet Andy Seehausen tomorrow. Uh, he's a friend of mine from, I believe, St. Louis that I've met through a few of the Texas things in Japan. But he's another BMX rider like myself and we get along really well. And he's a super, super talented dude that is going to be my crew chief. So uh, he's worked a lot with Warthouse. He ran Mesker's program. He's a very, very talented fabricator and he is going to really help us kind of legitimize everything that we do. Um, as you guys know, Alberto will be there working in the pits, super talented dude, knows the car super well. Also very, very funny. So whenever we need a lighthearted moment, Alberto's there to bring the spirits up. Uh, Tommy's obviously gonna drive the rig and he's also gonna be spotting. Um, he's done it a lot with Pat and he kind of has experience in regards to that. And one thing that I'm super, super excited about, Trevor from Motion Auto TV is actually going to be coming along with us for the four rounds. Um, you guys know Trevor, he's super, super smart. He's super, super funny. He's fun to be around. And when there's a crunch, like when we were doing the 1J swap in the garage, Trevor's super, super resourceful with coming up with the craziest ways to fix things in a very quick manner and kind of just making stuff work. So I'm excited to have him on board. Shulman's gonna be on board too. Um, you always gotta have someone that's fun to pick on. So no, all jokes aside, Shulman's a super hard worker and obviously he's been around us and kind of knows me, knows the stuff that I like with my cars. He's gonna help um, a lot of the uh, kind of random stuff will kind of be what Shulman will be doing, but also making sure the car looks good, keeping everything organized, um, going through tools, and stuff like that so that's gonna be you know the main backbone of the crew but on top of that I'm also gonna have like I said my friend Tommy on media kind of doing film stuff we might have our friend Jesse come out doing photo stuff Zach from the warehouse is gonna be out at all the rounds to helping us with merch stuff so we will have merch set up not a ton of stuff maybe a couple t-shirts and some little random stuff but that way if you guys do come over by our pit area uh, we will have that stuff kind of set up there but a really, really exciting thing that I'm, I'm very happy to uh, have happen with my program is Country, who you guys met with those videos uh, a couple days ago, um, or know from the videos I've made with him and Roman, is actually going to be a part of the program this year. And he's a very skilled person when it comes to uh, working with crowds and people like myself in the sense that he's going to try to keep everything under control and try to kind of help us organize and deal with things that aren't car related in the sense of, you know, people making sure that we don't have an issue with uh, crowding the pits, managing lines, and if we do any sort of autograph stuff, um, mainly just because I, I don't really vocalize it that much in videos and I don't really show um, how crazy it can get at events just because, I don't know, it's not like the, the vibe that I like to give off. Um, and frankly, I just don't film because I'm often shy when there's large crowds of people. But I get very overwhelmed, I get very anxious, and one thing that I didn't want to have to worry about in regards to competing um, was having that be the factor that really gets me out of my headspace because I think that will be um, someone's biggest enemy in something like this is if you can't handle the mental capacity to focus. And when there's a lot of people around, I get very overwhelmed. I've had anxiety attacks at events where I've had to go and hide in the trailer just because I get so overwhelmed. And um, having country around is really, really gonna help with that. And I, I know this is gonna sound like really, 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 really ridiculous to you guys um, that don't see it or haven't seen it at events. But uh, I'm super, super, super excited about having him on board and I think it's gonna make a huge difference and it's gonna be so much fun having him around, having a group of friends literally as the team and just being able to hang out, do grad stuff and hopefully win is going to make the whole experience that much better. I know me being who I am and coming into Formula Drift from YouTube, there's going to be a lot of eyes on kind of my team, my program, my driving, and how we do. There'll be a lot of people rooting for us, but there's also gonna be a lot of people that wanna see us do badly and because of that, like you can see, I am kind of taking this seriously in the sense that I'm trying to be over-prepared. Um, we'll get into it a little bit more, but I've got spares of pretty much everything for the car because when it when it all comes down to it, I want the, the reason why I do badly this year to be my driving and not anything else. So um, we're gonna do our best and uh, We've got such an amazing team, so many amazing people involved that uh, it, it really, in the end of the day, it boils down to your car and your team that really will carry you through something like this. And I'm super, super fortunate to have the people that I have around me. Um, there were a few questions in regards to who the title sponsor of my season this year is going to be. 
Um, initially, because it was so last minute, I was planning to just basically self-fund the entire season, um, but it did work out to where even though it was so last minute, because I'm not joking, I literally found out like two weeks ago that I was gonna be driving in Formula Drift, and the first round is now in two weeks, that pretty much no sponsor is going to be willing to do anything with that last minute notice. But there are companies that I do already have existing relationships with that are gonna be supporting my program this year. As you guys know, Injuku Racing, who built the car, um, I'm gonna obviously be working with BC Racing. You guys know right across the street, I literally work with BC on every single car that we put together. Um, I will be running Achilles tires this year. In Pro 2, you can choose either Achilles or Nexen. I was fortunate enough to be able to test both on Achilles and Nexen, and I did find that the Achilles had a much better grip life and much better consistency. So I am very excited that I was able to work out something with them and that Achilles will be my tire sponsor for the season. Um, in addition to that, uh, the two other companies that are helping me this season are Garrett, Turbo by Garrett. Again, these are all companies that I've worked with extensively. You guys know I have a Garrett Turbo on pretty much every car that I have. I've been running a 3584 on my S15, uh, basically maxed out for the entire time I've been testing on it, and that thing's still holding up. They make really great stuff, and I'm excited to you know have the Garrett logo on my suit along with all the other companies and everything. And then I'm also very, very excited. Um, ECU Master is going to be supporting me this season. You guys know I got an ECU Master in the S15. I got one in my R32. Me and Alberto have become very familiar with ECU Master software, but having support from Zach at ECU Master and kind of helping us data log, analyze, add more sensors, and just make sure everything goes well with the car and stays consistent. Um, there's just so much capabilities of the software that we haven't even been able to explore ourselves yet. So to both have ECU master sensor support and then to have Zach there helping us, um, I don't think he's gonna make every round, but I think he's gonna try to do the best that he can to be available. Um, I think he'll be coming to Orlando and we'll just basically be able to remote help us at the other rounds. Um, it's gonna be amazing. Cause like I said, in the end of the day, I can drive my best, but if the car doesn't hold up together and you know you don't have the team or the backing that you need, it's not gonna be possible to do well. So. I'm very, very, very fortunate to have these sponsors and everyone around me kind of helping me do this. It's really exciting. I'm really excited to kind of see where I stack up with everyone and uh, I don't know, it's it's gonna be a rad testament to the car that Njugu put together and to all the different products that I have on the car and everyone's excited about it. I'm really excited about it. I'm excited to push myself and originally this was just going to be a short segment before the actual content of this video which was going to be Andy coming into town, going over the car and then going and doing our final testing at OSW. However, after going through all this stuff and realizing how much there was to talk about, I'm realizing this was probably my guess is somewhere in the 10 to 15 minute range of talking and if I put all that other stuff after it, it's gonna be like a 40 minute video that no one's gonna watch. And by no one, I mean not you guys. I mean, well I know like some of you guys. I'm gonna save it because I've been all over the place so now I got a backup video so if I'm a day ahead, you know, we'll be fine, we'll be chilling. But anyway, stuff you guys can look forward to coming up in this next week. We will have the video doing final testing with Andy coming into town and going over the car pulling apart my engine because of catastrophic failure, which we will go over, uh, leveling my truck and putting big hot boy wheels on it. Um, uh, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll just quit YouTube. You got three videos and I'm just done. I'm burnt out. Content's washed up. Can't do it anymore. I don't know. I guess I'm screwed. What? I don't know. If you guys watch this video and you don't normally watch my videos, thanks for watching. I hope it didn't sound like an idiot. I hope you don't hate me. I don't like it when people hate me. I don't think there's a good reason to hate me. Unless you like really know me and you hate me, then that's a good reason to hate me. But usually the people that really know me don't hate me that much. They just like, they, they love to hate me or hate to love me or one of the two. I don't know. I'm rambling. I wanted to make my damn pizza, but I couldn't turn the oven on because I had the oven preheating while I was making this video and it sounded like there's a damn typhoon going on in here. <laughs> So I had to turn it off, restart filming the video, and uh, now I gotta wait for the oven to preheat and I have my pizza. And, and this is a bigger problem than the current status of my S15 engine. So you can imagine how important eating is to me. So anyway, there is your comic relief for a very serious video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Oh, and also, I think I might do a live stream maybe later tonight or maybe tomorrow. I'm gonna be doing a podcast with Maximum Driftcast talking more about it because I know you guys are gonna have a lot of questions and even though I try to cover as much as I could, there's gonna be some stuff that I missed out on. So I will see you then. Okay, bye. When you say